Good morning, bonjour. Uh, can you hear me okay? All right, very good. Thank you for uh, coming. My name is Rita Barenwall. Today I'm going to talk about Westinghouse's AP300 small modular reactor. Westinghouse is a global company, and we have over 9,000 employees around the world located at 90 different facilities in 21 different countries. Very proudly, we have three fuel fabrication facilities, one in the United States, one in the UK, and one in Sweden. And Westinghouse is the original equipment manufacturer for almost 50% of the world's operating nuclear plants today. So what does Westinghouse do? We actually provide many different products and services, and this is just a snapshot of what we offer, including I talked about nuclear fuel, we have components and manufacturing. We provide engineering services, as well as field services and plant mods. We offer staffing services. And I'm going to focus on our new plants offerings. So at Westinghouse, we know that one size does not fit all. So we offer a variety of different reactor options. The largest that we offer is our AP1000. It's a pressurized water reactor. It is 1,100 megawatts. And the smallest that we offer is our eVinci microreactor, and that's 5 megawatts. In between is our AP300 small modular reactor that is a derivative of our larger AP1000 reactor. And in our Gen 4 category, we are developing a lead fast reactor as well, and that's 450 megawatts. The beautiful thing about all of these reactors is that in addition to electricity, they can provide ancillary benefits, including hydrogen production, process heat, district heating, which is very important now that we're coming into the winter months in this region, as well as generating life-saving medical isotopes. We also offer a long-duration energy storage product that can be coupled with any of these nuclear reactors, as well as any renewable product. And finally, our lead fast reactor can use used fuel and thereby close the fuel cycle. And while that may not be unique here in this region, it is very unique in many other parts of the world, including where this technology um, w has originated um, in the United States. So I probably don't need to go too much into today's energy landscape with respect to why the world is looking at nuclear, um, but I do want to focus on where the customers that Westinghouse has for our technology are located. China has four AP1000 reactors in operation very successfully and six more units under construction. The US has one operating AP1000 reactor and one more due to come online very shortly. Poland has contracts for three AP1000 reactors. Ukraine has contracts for nine AP1000 reactors. Bulgaria has selected one and, and will possibly select another very soon. And India has selected six AP1000 reactors. So a little bit about AP1000, because I know you came to learn about AP300. But AP1000 is the father of the AP300 technology, so it's worth talking a little bit about that. AP1000 is a Gen 3 plant. It is the most advanced plant in operation today. It has fully passive safety systems and 72-hour coping time after a, a station blackout, in the event of a station blackout. It has optimized design features that use advanced modular construction. It is licensed by regulators in the United States, in the UK, and in China. It has record-setting operational performance. What that means is the shortest refueling outages that we have seen in decades the highest capacity factor that we have seen in decades. And this is remarkable in general. It is especially remarkable for a new plant when it comes online. We have advanced load following capabilities with this technology. And I don't even need to say this bottom one because we wouldn't be in the market if it weren't true. Safe, clean, reliable energy. When we look at the footprint of this plant, and that's important because construction costs go up the, the, the bigger the footprint is. AP1000 has the smallest footprint of its competitor uh, options. 
Okay, so I do want to introduce the AP300, and I'm going to attempt to play this video, and let's see if it works. I might have to... Do I need to do something? How do I get this to display? Stop this one? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's see if the sound will play. Okay, the sound is not playing, but it's on YouTube, so you can watch um, on YouTube. It's AP 300, but I will let you look through the watch through the video. It's just a minute. Okay. How do I get back? <laughs> That's where I want to present. So I talked about the uh, ancillary benefits of our nuclear power plants. So AP1000 I'm going to focus on, but pay attention because all of the features I talk about here are available with AP300. So district heating. We have flexible sizing that's available for individual community needs um, and additional 1 million metric tons of CO2 emissions are eliminated when using district heating during the cold months that would otherwise come from coal. It has the ability to desalinate, clean, desalinate water to produce clean water. It's the world's biggest, uh, it can power the world's biggest desalination plant while also providing electricity to the surrounding cities. And it only uses five to 10% of the electricity to do that. We can also use uh, energy storage, as I mentioned, to couple with it. So we've optimized the tur turbine island for enhanced grid stabilization. Um, and then finally, hydrogen production. Westinghouse has chosen to focus on a high temperature steam electrolysis system and use that mechanism for hydrogen production with these plants. So let me focus on district heating for a moment. The Haiyang nuclear power plant in China is the first use of nuclear power in the country to be also used for district heating. And so it's being used flexibly to feed the grid, to feed local industries, um, and also feed heat to applications. So you can see the phasing of, of the project, um, and it is very successfully providing district heating to uh, a few hundred thousand people in that region. Okay, so AP300 is based on our proven AP1000 technology. It is based on over 20 AP1000 reactor years of safe operation. It has more than 30 years of licensing experience um, and as you saw in the video, but did not hear, but you saw um, that it is readily deployable on less than 0.4 acres. So that's one fourth the size of a football pitch or a soccer pitch. So in, for our AP300 design, we are focusing on the small, the S in small modular reactor. Why? Because that helps accelerate deployment schedules. Um, and it, we are minimizing the changes to the safety-related systems, the NSSS systems, and we are maintaining the very important passive safety features in this design. Where we are focusing our innovation attention is on the key cost drivers to minimize the cost of this plant, and we are also reducing the footprint simultaneously. 
And then, of course, the M in SMR stands for modular, so we're focusing a lot on modularization. I'll focus, I have a few slides on that in a moment. Um, and that's for making sure that we optimize the design for construction. So while many SMR concepts focus on unproven NSSS designs that frankly carry extreme risks because they haven't been proven uh, to uh, the carry extreme risks to the overall cost impact um, and thereby also p potentially increasing the cost of the project, AP300 minimizes all of that because it is based on proven AP1000 technology. It's a 300 megawatt electric system, uh, 990 megawatts thermal. Um, it is, again, based on our AP1000 passive reactor technology, and I've talked about making that we have reduced the overall components that creates a simpler plant compared to other SMRs. I often get asked, what are you keeping the same? And it's, frankly, a laundry list of items, and it's over there on the right side. Um, many of the aspects are going to be identical to our AP1000 technology. So a little bit about the details of our AP300 reactor. Um, the fuel, the internals, and the reactor vessel are similar to those used in AP1000 and in existing plants. I want to focus on the fuel for a moment because we get a lot of questions on that as well. It is low enriched uranium. And for those that are very familiar with fuel, it's, uh, it's an RFA 12 by 12 uh, fuel assemblies um, that are going to be in the AP300. Um, for the steam generators, there will be a Delta 76, so it's a little bit uh, smaller than the AP1000, but it's pr a proven design that's based on our latest steam generator technology. Um, the RCPs are based on uh, technology that was developed uh, for, the, for the Navy. Um, it has sealless motor pumps that improve the safety of the pumps as well, and it eliminates the need for support systems. Um, and then we also have a simplified main loop. This is a one-loop uh, PWR system. At Westinghouse, we are pioneers in passive safety systems. This is almost identical to the AP1000 passive safety uh, system. It is fail safe, which means it automatically sh uh, shuts down without the need for operator intervention. It is walk away safe. Uh, it's self sufficient. We have a passive approach to safety that uh, eliminates the needs for backup power or cooling supply. Um, and as well, where it is required, um, we have, it's hazard proof. So not every country requires this, but it is already baked into the design. So for the countries that ha need, need that and have a requirement, it is hazard proof. And finally, of course, we have defense in depth for accident mitigation. So a little bit about our safety concept for AP300. Um, it has been designed and has the capability to respond to extreme Fukushima-like events um, because of three basic safety achievements. One, the plant self-actuates for station blackouts. Two, the plant is self-sufficient, and that means the passive safety approach to safety eliminates the need for AC power and cooling supply. And the plant is self-contained. Its systems, structures, and components are critical to placing the reactor in safe shutdown condition and maintaining spent fuel cooling and they're protected within the steel containment vessel. All right, a little bit more on the active defense and depth systems. Uh, we have uh, the ability to reliably support nor normal operation, and it's not required to mitigate design basis accidents. Um, in terms of the passive safety related systems, we have passive core cooling and passive containment cooling, um, passive processes only. There's no active pumps or diesels. Uh, needed for this, and then also we have severe accident mitigation features uh, such as in vessel retention that provides a reliable means of cooling damaged core and prevents core concrete interaction. So I talked about where we are uh, innovating and, and trying to drive down the, those costs uh, that um, start to add up. So we're looking at, again, the simple passive safety design feature. We have an extended uh, refueling cycle. So at the moment, this, this plant is designed for a three-year fuel cycle. Um, and, and that can be extended even further with, with additional analyses, but at the moment, we're at, we're at three years. Very uniquely, the spent fuel pool is integrated inside containment. We have robust co co uh, com composite steel concrete structural modules, um, and that's similar to AP1000. We've optimized our main control room, 
And then also we have factory outfitted room modules and equipment skids. So in the video, you saw that ultra compact footprint, um, one fourth the size of essentially a football pitch or a, a foot, uh, soccer pitch. And then you can see that the AP300 has the smallest footprint requirement per megawatt output. And then when we compare the technologies, so pressurized water technology compared to boiling water technology, the advantages of our AP300 fall into some key factor areas, including containment, radiological exposure, and application versatility. So I talked about electricity and the ancillary benefits from nuclear power plants. This schematic shows how that would work in an ecosystem. It's laid out, you have the power plant itself. You can feed electricity for hydrogen generation. You can then uh, also move, um, feed the electricity for process heat generation and district heating applications, water desalination. And then of course, you can couple it with our long duration energy storage product, which is a thermal storage product. And it can store unlimited megawatts of heat for up to 10 hours at a time. Very simple technology. It does, not, it does not use critical minerals like lithium or any of that type of uh, requirement. And so it's a very uh, unique and I would say very straightforward solution for energy storage. So our technology, our AP300 small modular reactor is readily deployable. We have, as I mentioned, tens of millions of hours that have been dedicated to AP1000 reactor development. So we absolutely take advantage of that and leverage that. Talked about five AP1000 reactors that are um, operating very successfully around the world today. One more nearing completion and then the, that laundry list of several more that are pending. We have licensing certainty with this technology. It is fully licensed by the US NRC. And we have, for AP300, submitted our regulatory engagement plan with the US NRC as well. We have, very importantly, an established supply chain. For decades, the supply chain in many countries has remained dormant because we did not have new nuclear builds. Westinghouse has worked very hard and very diligently to reinvigorate and reestablish the supply chain that is needed for new nuclear construction. So we absolutely intend to leverage that for our AP300 builds. The M stands for modular. Of course, we will have modular construction. I'll get into that on my next slide. And then we have reliable O&M. We, we've been in, um, in this area, region, in this business for many, many decades. Um, so we'll continue to leverage our, our O&M capabilities. Okay, so this slide depicts a little bit about um, why the M in modular is so important. We can factory produce our modules. This image shows transportation of the modules. Um, the third image shows on-site modular assemb module assembly. Um, and also under here, you see site survey preparation, site construction, and then construction and module assembly. These are images, real images, from our AP1000 reactor construction projects. This requires a lot of pre-engineering and a lot of early procurement and a lot of work being done in parallel. And I'll get into the schedule for AP300 uh, in a moment. So when we talk about innovation and modularization, it requires a lot of analyses and um, a lot of uh, engineering expertise. But modular construction improves quality and it reduces the work that is needed out in the field. It enhance, we're, we've, we're using enhanced composite steel concrete module designs um, and simplified structures. So what we have done through, through, I would say, painful lessons learned is understand what needs to be reduced in terms of space and in, in this case, reduced number of floors and walls in these engineering construction in the engineering room modules. Um, we've minimized cast in place reinforced concrete, and we've maximized the use of non-safety related structures. So this next slide shows 
a little bit more detail about our lessons learned. Um, of course, in the nuclear industry, we continue uh, to improve upon our performance through the application of lessons learned. And, and the columns here show our approach for not only the future AP1000 projects, but of course, for our future AP300 projects. So this has been divided into three area, or four areas um, in, in terms of procurement or uh, first of a kind equipment, critical timing of engineering completion, first time regulatory challenges, and then construction planning effectiveness. And I have colleagues that like to say we have scars to prove that we have lived through all of this. Uh, we do not want to incur more scars, so we're going to use these lessons learned and apply them to our AP1000 construction uh, projects. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Um, it is a lot of alphabet soup on here, but um, we used a lot of digital technology in the development of our design. We have state-of-the-art integrated building information modeling, our BIM, and plant lifecycle management, PLL systems for new plants. And our product is called WNexus, and we use that suite of tools in the design and in, to help us optimize that. So uh, finally, I just want to talk a little bit about our timing. Um, we get a lot of questions on when will this we be available? Can we have it today? Um, here's, the, here's the layout for the timeline. We have spent a lot of time getting design certification for our AP1000. We're leveraging that and moving into AP300 design and licensing. So from, from uh, last year up until 27 is where, where we look for NRC design certification and um, having a standard plant ready to deploy. So we intend to file um, for our design certification with the US NRC in 2025. They have estimated a 20 month review cycle. So we'll, we'll be generous and add on four months and say that's a two year review cycle. It puts us at 2027. And then we need three years for project preparation, for procuring long lead items, for site-specific design and site-specific licensing. And so we'll be ready for fusion nuclear concrete in 2030. And then we estimate first of a kind construction might take longer than 36 months, but nth of a kind construction will take about 36 months. So I will end with this slide. Um, and just say that AP300, our SMR technology, is proven technology. It's, can, it contains advanced safety features, and it is readily deployable. So thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to take questions. So we, uh, the question is, the fuel assembly will be similar but not identical, why? Um, we've actually made it just a little shorter, um, just for size. Uh, and that's the only reason. The other, the other um, adaptation we've made is we are including our ADOPT pellets, which is a doped uh, chromia and alumina pellet for improved fuel cycle economics. And that's, those are the only two differences. So it's um, size constraints and, and improved fuel economics. But I think the important thing to reiterate is that it uses low enriched uranium, which is very different from many of the other uh, SMR technologies that are relying on, at the moment, unaccessible HALU. Yes, it's a similar enrichment as the AP1000, yes. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, so I can't answer that last one. The, the last question was if I can comment on what happened with Toshiba. Um, I'm, I'm not well versed on, on that. But the first question is, are we working with um, Japanese companies, Japanese suppliers, and is there interest in AP1000 or AP300? And the answer to all of those is yes. Um, we are looking um, to partner with local companies where we want to build our local, or we're, we're, look, we're looking to work with local companies and um, keep that talent and the supply chain local to where these plants are going to be built. So if a plant is being built in Japan, for example, we want to use local supply chain. The plants that we are building in, in Poland at the moment, we are using local supply chain and local talent. And for Poland specifically, Poland, uh, Czech Republic, and, and Ukraine, we actually invite interns to come to our offices in Pittsburgh, among other offices around the world, to train for a summer on AP1000 technology with the intent that they go back to their native countries and help with the construction and operation of those plants um, as they start to come uh, to fruition. So Westinghouse very much believes in taking advantage of the local talent, local supply chain, and feeding the local economy. Yes. So the technical and well accepted definition of SMR has an upper threshold of 300 megawatts electric. So in, that's one reason. The other is in talking to our potential customers and assessing the potential market, what we were seeing was that many developers had a, had a much smaller module, modular reactor, but then they were offering four packs or six packs. And so the collective output was actually close to 300 megawatts as well. Um, and we also, there were a couple more reasons where it's, AP1000 was based actually on an AP600 design. And so when we scale all of that back down to AP300 to get it into a, that, again, that's SMR nomenclature. Yeah. Yes. Oh, hang on, I can't, I, my ears aren't that good. No. Okay, so you're asking about the microreactor? Um, I feel like Oprah Winfrey now, like walking around. Um, <laughs> um, the E. Vinci microreactor is a heat pipe reactor. It's sodium cooled, um, and it's based on heat pipe technology that actually was invented at Los Alamos National Lab in the United States. We, they're a very good partner of ours. Um, so it's completely different. It does not need water. Um, and has a very, very small footprint. It's five megawatts, can be actually transported by truck, rail, or, or um, ship. Yeah. Okay. Yep, four minutes. I'm getting the signal, all right. I thought she had a question. <laughs> yes. First deployment is in the UA? Uh, that has yet to be determined, and, and I will say we are seeing a lot of international interest, so if the first deployment is not in the U.S., I, I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. Um, but for we, we needed to start the licensing process somewhere, um, and because the U.S. NRC had already licensed our AP1000, it made sense to um, start talking to them about the AP300. Now, we have actually, we intend to um, go through the GDA process in the U.K. as well, um, uh, not only for a couple reasons. One, we've been down selected in the Great British Nuclear uh, Competition for the AP300, so we want to make sure that we follow the licensing process. Two, AP1000 is, is licensed in the UK as well, so we're, we're hoping that the uh, licensing path that we expect in the US will be similar in the UK. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any other questions, please stop by our Westinghouse booth in J. Juliet 101. Thank you.